that I was going to continue to do at the moment. It is something that I do want to do uh, once I once I kind of automate these other businesses a little bit. How's your day? YouTube's having problems, so I'm just going to record this and upload it afterwards. Okay, that's uh, fine. Right now we're recording, so my day, my day's been pretty good. A little more yeah. chill. Uh, I got some, we're doing something actually pretty cool here in Vegas. Are you familiar with uh, cryo chambers? Yeah. So we're putting in a uh, cryo chamber spa inside of one of the casinos. And in five minutes in one cryo chamber, you burn off 800 calories. It's good for your mind. It's good for your body. Uh, does amazing things for you. And uh, we're also doing the, are you familiar with the company called PillPack? Is that the one where they put the, um, I've heard of it, medication tell me about is, it. Yeah. Whatever your medication is, they put it in like a little sealed pack each day so you can just pull them off and take all your meds. Oh, uh, no, 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 I haven't heard of that. I thought you were talking so, about the ones where they have the little patches that they put on you and it gives you like your vitamins and stuff like that. Yeah, no, this is, uh, if you look up pill pack, you'll see it's uh, basically like a little, uh, distribution of your, your daily medication. What we've okay. got is we sell little pill packs, but the only difference is they're nutraceuticals, uh, vitamins for your brain. Uh, okay. There's pills, uh, there's vitamins in there for calm, uh, alert, focus, um, basically just brain vitamins. And we sell those $3 a pack because it's funny, you can buy a jar of vitamins, yep. 90, 90 tablets in a jar for like 20 bucks. But yeah. if you take and put them all in a pill pack, you can sell them for $3 a piece and your margin is like $2. So that's crazy. We do that and we, we're building out the facility and yeah, it's pretty okay. cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, I know. It'll be over okay. at the whim if you know any, if you know the casinos out here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of familiar. I usually head out to Vegas uh, every summer for uh, summer league. So I'm usually oh, there the every basketball summer. basketball summer league? Yep. Yeah, that's a fun time. Uh, I don't think uh, we're going to have a summer league this year, though. I don't even know. Yeah. Are we even going to have basketball? So they uh, last I knew, they were trying to have basketball. They were trying to do the the NBA in uh, in Orlando. They were trying to do it at, at uh, Disney World. So all the teams, all the games would be in one location? Yeah, I think there's – well, I don't know if it's all of the teams. I think it was just a, a certain amount of teams that had a chance at making the playoffs still that they were going to uh, bring in. But yeah, it was a, you can X the Bulls off that list. <laughs> yeah, they probably they probably wouldn't be on there. They funny got a nice thing is, funny thing is they're a great young team. They yeah. just have the worst management ever. <laughs> yeah, I their mean, coaching has been terrible too. Oh my god. Like the <laughs> the, uh, the egghead that's the uh, coaching them now, Boylan, he reminds me yeah. of uh, remember that uh Coneheads movie? Yeah, back yeah back in the day. He I used to love that movie. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Jim Boylan is Conehead. He's literally a walking <laughs> Conehead. <laughs> yeah, no, he's 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 a terrible coach. So I don't. Oh my god! Re- what when your star player Zach Levine? He, I, he called timeout a couple of times with like seconds left in the game when they were down by like ten, and yeah. Zach Zach just looks at him. and He's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, and, no, I I remember that. There was another time where Zach. Like uh, something happened, they got into an argument, and he came out and he shot a three from half court and made it, and it was kind of like a fuck you to, to Coach Boylan. I'll be honest with you. Over the last five years, is it just me, or have NBA players gotten more range on their three-point jump shots? Like, I'm seeing guys pull up, like, from ridiculous range. Yeah, no, Steph, Steph Curry's changed the game, man. So that's that's actually my thing, basketball. I, I was a coach for – uh, three years. I just uh, I kind of stopped this past season, and I probably won't get started back up with it just because I, I intend on being busier and busier. So, um, but yeah, Steph Curry kind of changed the game, man. You got guys like Trey Young, and everybody's range is just getting crazy. Luka. LeBron's range, Luca. Yeah, oh you, got, you got all these guys. But that's what I tell people. Like the NBA now, people want to say, you know, in the '90s, that's when the best basketball was. There's no way, man. Guys now are more athletic. They're 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 more skilled, and you have to guard guys all the way out to half court now. So and you have to guard big guys all the way out there. Exactly, like, crazy. exactly, exactly. I mean, you look at some of these guys like LeBron and uh, Laurie Markkinen from the Bulls, and I mean, there's just there's guys that are six ten, seven feet, just launching. 
Like, just launch You got it. Chris Stapps, you got Anthony Davis, you got Jokic, you got Nurkic, you got all these huge guys out there just shooting the ball. Yeah, anytime their last name ends with an IC, for sure they can hit the three. Oh, yeah, and they got <laughs> their skill, too, for sure. So, so let's talk a little bit about who you are. Um, we're going to literally air this out to let people learn a little bit about your journey. So yeah. in a nutshell, who, who are you, Tyler? Yeah, so, um, I mean, for everybody that doesn't know who I am, uh, my name is Tyler Dwyer. Um, really, I'm a family man. Um, uh, kind of my goal in life is to be the best father that I can be, and that kind of encompasses a lot of things, right? So uh, for me, in order to be the best father that I can be, I, I need to make sure I create something and pass down to my kids. Uh, I have to be a good husband. You know, I have to, you know, I have to help them develop whatever skills they have. I have to be there to support them to, you know, make it possible for them to do whatever they want to do. Uh, so, yeah. So basically, I'm a family man. I'm, I'm a young guy. I'm, I'm 28 years old. I love sports. Um, What's your favorite? Like, favorite sport? Yeah. Uh, basketball, of course. Yeah, basketball is number well, one for me. Not, not hockey? <laughs> Definitely not. I was actually uh, – I was just born and raised in Michigan, so. Uh, I grew up in I, Chicago. Yep, Midwest, got you. Listen, it's not a sport until somebody loses a few chiclets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're playing basketball in Michigan or Chicago, that's gonna happen. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the funny thing too, we talked about the games changing. Yeah. 20 years ago, hockey was all about the 200 penalty minute rough guys. Now, you don't see hardly, when, if somebody drops the glove, it's like the top thing on ESPN that night. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like yeah. a, a rarity. I think, I think guys are in sports are, they're more aware of like their, their bodies and staying healthy and kind of how their, their health equals money. So I think, especially when it comes to basketball and, you know, football and hockey, those are all sports where you got to be, you got to be, if you're hurt, I mean, you're useless. So. Well, I've interviewed a lot of athletes, millionaires and billionaires, and I can tell you one thing that a really good friend of mine, Israel Adonage, who's an amazing businessman, um, yeah. used to play in the NFL. He was just an unbelievable athlete. And he told me something that actually stuck with me for the last couple of years. And I'll share it with you because I think, I think it's one of the best things I've heard. Athletes started realizing probably about 10, 20 years ago that their brand was more valuable than getting in a fight or an injury. And that exactly. their personal brand was going to outlive their career. So exactly. athletes started realizing that, hey, I'm not going to get myself hurt fighting because my personal brand, my teeth, my face, everything else, and even the way that I handle myself, my personal brand is my greatest asset. And when he told me that, I started realizing that that's almost a synonymous thing that I hear with very successful people. They always say to themselves, my personal brand is more important. That's why you never see you know, super wealthy people getting a fight in a bar because yeah. they know that their brand is super important. And that's something yep. that as you grow and then as an individual, you start realizing that your personal brand, who you are, what you do, what you value, those things are the most valuable things in your life. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I mean, uh, it's, co it's cool you say that actually, because uh, that's what I was talking with uh, one of my friends. Uh, he actually... Um, he actually played, uh, he played in, he's been playing in the G League for a while. Uh, G League? We were talking, yeah, he played in the G League for a while. Um, he got called up actually this past season for a few games. Um, uh, his name's Sir Dominic Pointer. Uh, he played he at St. John's. He sounds familiar because the G League's got some amazing talent. Like this Man. last, this last season, there were about 10 players in the G League that were ridiculously talented. Like how they yeah. how they weren't playing on NBA teams is beyond me. And and I'm telling you, Sir Dominic is one of those one of those guys too. He's he's been playing uh, for the Cavs G League team, uh, Canton Charge, for a while now. He got drafted by them in the second round, um, out of St. John's. Uh, when he was at St. John's, he was he won an award for being the best player in New York in college. Like I mean, he can really play, but he's a he's a defensive guy, and the NBA is really all about offense right now. But he can yeah. lock down. I'm telling you, if he went in the league and he he played, he could lock down anybody. Um, but he 
but we were talking about it and we were just kind of talking about how, how your brand is important and how you need to look at yourself like a business and you need to run yourself like a business. Like you need to present yourself like you would your business, everything. Um, and I was just talking to him about that and like personal branding stuff. That's one of my, like one of my best friends. So, um, but yeah, that's, I 100% agree with what you were saying. Uh, there's, there's too often there's, there's kind of people that don't look at themselves like, like a business and, and they're trying to conduct business or run businesses. And then those things kind of fail because they don't have that, that, uh, they don't have that, that presence about them when they speak to people, they're, they're, they're not respectful of people's time, things like, things like that. So, um, yeah. Cool. Got a cameo from my dog in the background. He's probably <laughs> barking at the UPS Amazon guy. Oh, you're going to hear a ton of kids in the background for me, probably. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got five kids, right? Yeah, five. So from a father's perspective, talk about what, it, what it's like to time manage yourself. Because I think if you've got five kids, you've got to really be a time management expert in order to successfully run your business. Yeah, so I'm actually still working on that. Um, but I've gotten a lot better. Uh, like I said, I have like, I have uh, two businesses right now that are that are really up and running. I'm in the process of starting two more. Talk um, about the so two that you have up and running. So for the people that don't know. Yeah. So um, so first, the, the first business that I started up was a affiliate, uh, affiliate marketing business, um, which I had no idea would would do the numbers that it's done as fast as it's done. Uh, it just kind of happened. Uh, so so how that started was. Um, I took a course uh, by this guy named his name's Todd Billion on on Twitter at Todd Billion. Shout um, out to Todd Charles, Billion. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy, uh, Charles Oglesby. Um, but he's uh, he has a course about investing and, and trading options and, and things like that. And I was doing really good in the stock market, and I was posting my wins. And I kept having people ask me like, "Yo, how are you doing this?" Blah blah blah. And I wasn't an affiliate, and I'm telling people, and then I'm like, I feel like I should be getting paid for this. So um, I remember uh, Chris's course, uh, the Reloaded Film Manual. Uh, Chris Johnson. That's Shout another out to person. Chris Johnson. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. So, it's funny. My background. I know Todd would be looking at this background, and he'd be oh, jealous yeah. as hell because he just moved into his new office. And yeah, he'd yeah. Be like, he'd be like, "Wow, that's a nice view." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loves the views. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. So uh, I remember from watching Chris uh, Chris's Reloaded Film Manual that he was talking about affiliate marketing. And that kind of clicked for me. And I was like, okay, this is, this is how I can make money from it. So um, that really took off for me. I started promoting it. Affiliate marketing is just where you like promote other people's products. And the only way I affiliate market is through social media, uh, Twitter and Instagram for Gumroad courses that I've taken and that I've had success with. Um, so I ended up making uh, over $10,000 in, in, in less than, less than two months uh, with that. Uh, and there was zero initial investment. So that's really cool. I, I encourage anybody that's really looking to get started with anything that has to do uh, with selling a physical product or a digital product to start with affiliate marketing because it, it really teaches you how to market your own products on social media. Uh, but yeah, that really took off. So that was the first thing that I started. And then from there, I... Oh, hold on. You got the Amazon guy at your house too? Yeah, I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me see if I can. If Don't I worry about it. Do it's life. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah. So um, let me get this back up. Yeah. So um, the the resale business was the, was the next thing I decided to start up. And I, I did that. Uh, me and my wife do that together. Um, she kind of runs all the accounting and uh, handles the books, uh, customer service stuff. Um, and I'm the one out there sourcing, doing all the, doing all the hard work, taking packages and uh, finding what po products are going to be profitable, things like that. Um, but another shout out to um, he's at Coach Joe Hart on uh, on Twitter. Um, he's a he's a cool dude. He has a he has a product on Gumroad called Products for Profit, um, and that's what got me into uh, reselling. Um, and with that, uh, me and my wife, I believe we we have to be over forty thousand dollars in sales now in less than four weeks or about four weeks. Um, but yeah, reselling, all I do is I, I go to Walmart, Target, different stores, department stores that you can find products that people can't find online and they don't know how to find them in the stores, things like that. And then you can resell them for more. Um, and that's been really great for me so far. 
after we're done recording this, ask me how I can get you Amazon gift cards at 30% off. And that'll take your resale business off to a whole new level. I'm going to show you some interesting do that. things about uh, Bitcoin and how Okay. Uh, we'll talk about that all, offline. Or maybe we'll even just do okay. another video one day and tell people yeah. about Bitcoin. But um, yeah, yeah, that 30% margin on Amazon gift cards gives you the ability to buy stuff on Amazon and sell it like crazy. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds I know, too easy right there. I know a girl that's doing probably, I'm not kidding you, $100,000 a month in gross sales and her margin's about 30 grand just because she's being able to buy stuff on Amazon and sell it on offer up and she's just like crazy. The funny thing is she doesn't even ship it to our house anymore. She ships it directly to the person from Amazon. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah she, no, puts, that's... she puts iPhones up there. She puts MacBooks. I mean, she just she's going crazy with it. Oh yeah, no, nah, I'm definitely interested. Let's talk about it after. And that 30% margin is good margin. Yeah, for, of course. Yeah, right now my margin is pretty high uh, just because I have some products that are that are selling over over twice as much. I, I don't want to give the products away just because it's some of the products that are in uh, products for profit. But uh, yeah, I have a, I have a really good margin right now. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So I learned a long time ago that people that are millionaires they want it more than anyone else. That's why they are millionaires. That's why they're successful. Their want is really strong. But a friend of mine who's a millionaire told me once, it's your want has to be your why and your why has to drive your want. Now, what's your why? My why is my family, uh, my, my kids, my wife, my mom, my sisters. I want to make sure that everybody's taken care of. And I've, I've kind of put that on my back. Um, I feel like I'm the, I'm the one that to do that, that can do that for everybody in my family. So I just want to make it happen. And, um, when it comes to my kids and, and, you know, my family, I'll, I'll do anything for them. I'll, I'll make sure that everybody's straight. Um, and that's just kind of how I am. That's good. It's important yeah. to have a why. Yeah. Well, who's yeah your, I, how, I, how old's your oldest kid? So it gets interesting. So, um, my wife's a, a little bit older than me, but, um, my oldest kid is uh is 19 so that's from a previous uh previous my wife's previous marriage so uh, has the 19 year old been pulling you on the sleeve going yo can you talk can you show me how you're doing this um not necessarily she's uh, she's actually in nursing school right now so um she's pretty focused on doing that and trying to keep her grades up um because that's, that's, hard, that's, kind that's of, hard enough to buy it. being a nurse and being a doctor there's about this much difference. Exactly, exactly. And, and on top of that, too, she's she actually does help me. Uh, I'll, I'll have to ask her sometimes if she can go grab something for me. And she, She's really good with her money, so I think she's going to start investing uh, some of the money that she has put away. Um, all of my kids invest now, so, um, so yeah. And have, then, they uh, figured, have they figured out to buy a little bit of Bitcoin for their future? <laughs> no, so I haven't I haven't got into any crypto yet. I have a lot of I got a lot of learning to do. Uh, right I, I am I am setting you up with my how Bitcoin works course. There listen, you spend seventy six dollars on it, there's a hundred dollars worth of free Bitcoin in the course. Okay. It literally costs you money not to buy it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. I'm I'm huge into Bitcoin. I've been in the uh, space for about almost ten years now. And okay. I actually believe that people should have a little bit of Bitcoin because if you look over the last 10 years, it's the greatest appreciating asset class period. It went mm -hmm. from three cents to $10,000. Just in March, it went from 3000 to 10,000 where it's today. It is the best appreciating asset class against the disastrous moves of the U S government and the U S dollar. If you look at yeah. what's happening in our country today, they're printing U S dollars like crazy. Yeah. I mean, when I say crazy, I'm talking by trillions of dollars. Well, simple law of supply and demand is when the supply of U.S. dollars goes up, the value of each dollar goes down. Yeah. And Bitcoin is a correlating asset that correlates against hyperinflation fiat currencies. You got to make yeah, Bitcoin heard, heard, part of their future. Yeah, no, I've heard I've heard people uh, hedging with Bitcoin and things like that. So, no, I, it's something I, I definitely uh, I think I should look into. Highly agree. So, so you've got your why down pat, and you've really done that well. Talk a little bit about how you got here and where you're going, how, how you got here today and where you're going down the road. Yeah, so I like to say that 
you know, this all happened fast, but you know, it, it didn't happen overnight. So um, I, I really started my journey back in, uh, back in March. Uh, and that's when I started buying Gumroad courses. I found out about Gumroad. I stumbled across uh, Chris Johnson and, and Todd Billy. Uh, and that's, that's just when I got started. Um, what I did was uh, I, I really got an interest in, in, in just building my own personal wealth uh, and, and trying to figure out how to stop trading my time for money um, so I can spend more time with my family. Um, and uh, through that journey, I found out about affiliate marketing. Um, I found out um, about, about selling Gumroad courses. I have my own Gumroad course uh, that's part of my affiliate marketing business. Um, so I kind of just, uh, took that, um, and I keep trying to scale everything, uh, keep trying to 10 times everything. Um, and I plan on getting as many income streams as I, as I can manage. Um, and I, I think that's the easiest way to, to build wealth. Um, because if I have a bad day of affiliate marketing, then I have, I can have a good day of, of resale business or vice versa. Um, and I want to keep adding things. I, I plan on buying some ATMs, some vending machine routes uh, here shortly. Um, those are some things I'm interested in. Um, I've been investing pretty heavily uh, lately. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, I just, I just plan on keep growing my different, my assets, uh, buying, buying income really. So. I think that's smart. So what's your roadmap look like? What are you, you're looking at ATMs, you're looking at vending machines. Why do you like ATMs? Um, all of it's passive. I mean, th that's the best way. I mean, ATMs, you put them down, uh, you collect the fees, uh, you fill them up once a week and, and, and you're good. Same thing kind of with the vending machines. It's, it's passive. You know, you go, you put the work in, you know, once or twice a week and, and you're all set to make money throughout the week. And that's, like I said, I, I've been trying to just figure out ways to stop trading my time for money so I can go on vacation whenever I want. I can spend time with my family, things like that. Where are you at? You're down in Arizona, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm right outside of Phoenix. I'm in the West Valley, Litchfield Park. A little crispy today? Always. <laughs> yeah, today, out in Vegas, it's a little crispy, too. Yeah, you're in the desert, too. Oh, my God. Got to wear the hat. <laughs> got to wear a little sunblock. Got to wear I some got long burnt. sleeves. I got burnt up. I went out in the morning on a bike ride with my son, and I had on a, like a, I had on a beater. I was just thinking, you know, it would be all right. It's not, it's not too crazy. I came home, I was burnt all over the place. Yeah, right around now till about September, and I'm sure it's the same down there, the sun is a different kind of sun. It's yeah. almost like we have no ozone. And for me, like I go out and I walk my dog and do my bike riding probably four in the morning till about 5.30, right when the sun's either not up or just coming up. Because yeah. when that sun gets up, it just it hits your skin. It, it, you, you get burned bad. Yes, yeah, I always tell people when you open up the door to go outside, it's like opening up the oven when it's on and looking in there. It's like burning your face off. Yeah, one of my buddies, he had a, his AC go out. He's at Panorama Towers, which is a big uh, high rise here in Vegas. Okay. And he spent the whole day trying to get his AC. He's like, you got any, you got any tips on a YouTube channel? I got <laughs> I to figure out how to get my AC working. He was, he was cooking today like crazy. I bet, especially being in a high rise too. All right. So people that are watching this, people that are saying, okay, I want to learn from you. Do you do consulting? Do you coaching? Um, I haven't started that yet. It's something that I, that I do need to look into, uh, but I haven't started any coaching, any consulting. Uh, usually my DMs, I mean, people that hit me up in my DMs, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll help them as much as I can. Like I'm not, uh, I can't get to all my DMs all the time just because they have, there is pretty busy in there, but um, I try to help as many people as I, po I possibly can for, you know, for free right now. So we got a group called Masterclass Millionaires, where people that are millionaires are helping others to become millionaires. And people that want to become millionaires are buying courses to learn how people are making money. That okay. kind of fits really in line with your mental strategy, your state of mind, your mindset. Yeah, yeah, no. And that's, that's what I want to do. I want to bring people along with me. I don't think, uh, I think being on this journey alone, it would be kind of pointless. I mean, it will help me, but at the same time, if I have the knowledge to spread to others, I think that's, that's what I should be doing, especially for people my age. Like, uh, if you're, if you're in your twenties, now is the time to start. 
You know, it's funny because uh, not too many people in their 20s think this way. I think, uh, I think you're doing a great service for people by literally showing them a different mindset because the, the current mindset that people have is go to college, get a check, trade time for money. And that doesn't work long term. No. That's a bad idea. Yeah. And the, I mean, the school system starting, you know, in elementary school, it teaches you how to be an employee, how to be a consumer. And, you know, those those things no longer interest me. I kind of figured that out. Um, I would say early this year, I started really researching and I was like, you know, this this job thing doesn't doesn't work for me. And I, I, I would be lying if I told people that I was a, a great employee because I'm just not. And I think a lot of business owners, they're they're not. I mean, they they kind of see problems with systems that they're working with at their job. And, you know, they, they know in their mind how they can fix them. And that's just how I was. I was very like at my job, it was, I would find problems. I would find solutions. And, and a lot of times at my jobs, uh, people would think like I wasn't working as hard, but my numbers would always be up there with the best. And it would be always because I was always about being efficient and things like that. Um, but yeah, I was just, I, I want I want people my age to understand that they can start something. It doesn't matter what it is. Just kind of get started and just just figure it out. I think that's the best advice you can give, and that's why I wanted you to tell your story because I think your message is a great message for everyone to hear. People have to get out of that situation that they're in now, and they need to literally look outside the box of the life that they've been taught about. And they have to understand yeah. that life can be more than what it is today. Yeah, and I mean, it's going to be up to people like us to spread that message. I don't think the school system is going to change anytime soon. So um, it's going to it's going to really boil down to us, you know, uh, people that are in their 20s teaching their kids. I mean, older people in their 30s, 40s teaching their kids. And then it, it's going to kind of people will start figuring out earlier and earlier. Uh, but, I will say yeah. one thing. This whole COVID thing has done one thing. It shortened the distance between digital online learning and yeah. learning in a classroom. I, yeah. I know so many people. In fact, I read an article the other day. The pace that people are on right now over the next two years, people will spend about $468 billion on digital knowledge. Think about that yeah. for a second. $468 billion on digital knowledge will be consumed over the next two years. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how it should be. I think, I think this whole COVID thing it, it has people at home and people are on their computer, on their phone, and they're, they're starting to figure it out, I feel like. Um, kids are, are having to learn not at school. They're, they're learning from home on their computers. So, I mean, this isn't, this isn't I think the secret's, the secret's starting to get out. I couldn't agree with you more. I think, uh, I think there's actually a whole new crop of millionaires that are going to be grown out of what I consider the Zoom era or the COVID era. There's going to yeah. be a whole, and I, I think 100% people are going to follow you, learn great ways to make money, and it's going to change their, their, their financial life dramatically, not just their income, yeah. but what they do with that money after they get it. And that's yeah. the whole, that's the whole deal in life is you can make a ton of money, but it's what you do with that money afterwards that dictates whether you keep that money or whether it grows. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's all about buying income. And I think that's, that's an important concept for people to understand is that you can actually buy income. Like when I talk about buying vending machines, that's buying income. When I talk about buying an ATM, that's that's what buying that income. What does cost these days? Um, so they, the ones that I've been looking at, they're like uh, twelve hundred, two thousand. They can go up from there, but I've been looking at them. Uh, those are pretty like simple machines, though. They can get pretty expensive. It's funny you mentioned that a friend of mine bought seven hundred fifty dollar worth of space at McCarran Airport a couple of years ago, and mm. all he did was put the big can of water um it's it's not the 12 ounce but the big ones the 18 ounces yeah and all he did was just put a refrigerated water vending machine and he makes about six thousand dollars a week out of that machine you yeah, pay seven fifty for a square spot and an electrical outlet if you if you can find the right spot there's i mean 
there's so much money to be made in like vending machines and ATMs. You just, it's all about finding spots that have foot traffic. Well, the thing that benefited him is he was selling canned water and all of a sudden McCarran and SFO and everyone else started getting rid of bottled water with plastic bottles. So yeah. canned water is all of a sudden the big thing. I don't even think I've seen canned water before. <laughs> Uh, check it out. You'll see one of his cans. It's called uh, Death Wish or Death Liquid Death. Look up Liquid Death. You'll see it. It's an oversized can, and it's okay. cold. And it, yeah, it's canned water in airports is going to be the big replacement for plastic bottles. Like it's I'm happening surprised. in many airports already. Yeah, they need it. I'm surprised it hasn't hit here yet because it's so yeah. dry out here. You got to have water everywhere. Yeah, it's you know it's funny. I'm surprised you haven't been selling the. Uh, I don't have one around, but you know those metal waters. Those things are a great online seller. Like a buddy of mine ships a ton of them in from a country that Trump is at war with right now, and uh, he ships a ton of those things in. And they're the cylinder, the steel ones that like they keep things cold for like twelve, twenty four hours. He oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I know what you're talking about. My daughter loves those things. Those things sell like yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah he buys them for two three bucks and they sell for 12 to 15 bucks yeah and that's yeah. all he does every month is just flips those those containers from the country that trump hates <laughs> and it's that easy though right like i mean you go on alibaba and find something that you buy every day and you buy it from somewhere in you know in china or whatever and you're paying two dollars for it and you're selling it for however much you want to, whatever price point you, you think is right, whatever, after you do your research, whatever you come up with. But I mean, to think about it, those water bottles, $2 for that is nothing. And you could sell it for 15. Come on. That's, I mean, and it's that easy for a lot of different products. Yeah, it's really that easy. All right. So where can people find you? Um, so um, on Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Tyler W. DeWire. Um, it's T-Y-L-E-R. W D W Y E R. And I'll put the links for everyone down below so that they can just click on it. Um, okay. Little word association Cheetos or Doritos? Cheetos. Good call. Good call. Um, Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Good call. Good call. <laughs> MJ or LeBron? LeBron. LeBron? Yeah, he, he is. He's physically the greatest basketball player ever to play the game. Uh, so he's, that one is debatable because there's this guy named Will, there's this Will guy named Will Chamberlain that I mean he was seven foot one. He benched five hundred and fifty pounds. Played every minute of every game. Yeah, <laughs> so, but here let's be honest too. He was in a different league yeah, then yeah. too because the people he was playing against. It wasn't really fair. Like he was just a. Yeah. He scored. He scored a hundred points in a game once, didn't he? Yeah, he had a hundred. Yep. Yeah. He he was like if LeBron played in that era. Yeah. He'd score a hundred points if he wanted to. Also. Yeah, he so, probably scored two hundred. Is Will still alive or did he die? He passed away. Yeah, he was a beast. He was. He, he was. That's one. He's. He's one of the few players that, you know, you could take from any era and you could place him in now as he was, oh, and he would yeah. still kill it. Still kill it. Okay, yeah. so here, your best five players, if you're going to put together a team and coach them right now, best five, you can pick them from an era. era. Any era? Any era. So, of course, I'm going to go LeBron and MJ. Uh, I got to put, got to put Shaq in there. Um, um, see, I, I'm, I'm taking KD. I'm going to put KD in there. Um, I know that's probably unpopular opinion, but, um, point guard, I'll probably have to go with another unpopular opinion. I'm going to take Steph. Um, and then you think, you think Steph's the best point guard? I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's necessarily the best, but if I put him in a lineup with the guys that I'm talking about and they have to guard him to half court, I mean, I think people are going to have trouble with that. You got Shaq setting screens. I think, I think he'll do, do some damage. And then um, for my last spot. I think that is your spot. You got Shaq. Is it? I thought I had four. 
Shaq, we got Shaq, KD, KD Steph, MJ, LeBron. and LeBron. Oh, yeah, that's five. Yeah. Wow. No Kobe. Rest Man. in peace. No Kobe. Rest in peace. Damn, Kobe. But, yeah, no, I – for Kobe, uh, I mean, I've always said it even before he passed. I mean, he's obviously a great player. Uh, he's one of the faces of, of the league, you know, and he will be forever. But um, he, he's he's never been in my, my top five. You know, if I was going to go against that top five, I'd have MJ and Kobe for no other reason because they had the secret, like, friendship with each other. But they yeah. never got to really, like, expand that friendship into playing together. Yeah, and plus they were just in different time time eras. But yeah. if they could have played together, I think those two in the backcourt, you don't even need a point guard. One either one of them can bring the ball up. Either one of them can shoot. Either yeah. one of them can drive. Either either one of them can do whatever they want. And, the game uh, similar, very similar. Yeah, and then put LeBron in one of the forwards. I'll, this is one that'll probably break your heart. Larry Bird. He knew how to play. No, that doesn't break my heart. He's one of he got, he's another player that can play in any era. It, it's so weird too because he could never jump. Like it was so bad. Yeah. It was so bad, but he was literally one of the greatest passers ever. Like people yeah. didn't realize how good he was with the ball. Like he just yeah. and then he had that sh- shot. Like it was it was butter. It was just yeah. it was butter. He caught the net almost on every shot. <laughs> there was very very little rim in his game. Like he yeah. he very rarely hit rim. He yep. was just utter when he shot that ball. And that's what I tell my kids, too. Like, that's the that's the first thing I had them working on is shooting is because if you can shoot, you can play anywhere. So. Yeah, and then I got to tell you, my middle guy, he's just going to outrun Shaq and every, up and down the court all night long. Fucking Elijah one. People don't realize that guy played soccer. That guy yeah, played no, soccer. He, he loved playing soccer. He had the best feet of any big man ever. He yeah, was athletically right. a beast. Yeah, no, he was a beast. I love a king. I'm telling you, if we can get like some sort of video game with those five on five, I think I take you best of seven. Uh, I think I'm, I think uh, Michael's kissing the the trophy at the end of that seven game series. <laughs> well, let me know if you got an Xbox One. Where I can give you my gamer tag. We can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Tyler, I am so glad we had a chance to tell your story. I think people should hear this more and more. I think your story is solid. For more importantly everyone of all ages whether you're a teenager whether you're in your 20s heck i don't care, even care if you're uh, you know an elderly person at home especially if you're older now's the time to learn how to flip things and to learn how to set up an e-commerce store to learn how to sell digital assets it, it literally connects you with a whole community of people that are looking to feed their brain looking to learn and grow and appreciate yep yeah, no, and I mean, that, that's all I'm trying to do is I, I want people to learn what I've been able to learn. Uh, my life has completely changed in, you know, a few short months uh, just from doing this. Um, and, and it's a lot easier than people think. I, I think people get paralyzed at the thought of, of failing. Um, so whenever somebody hits me up like, hey, I have an idea, I have this, I have that, I always tell them, you know, you won't know until you try and just get started. I mean, you'll, you'll honestly be surprised at how many people will support you. I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, uh, one of the most supportive people is somebody that we both know, and that's Chris Johnson. And yeah. I love uh, his, his message in life, which is to help others become millionaires, to help others find their financial freedom. And that's what it's really all about is freedom. I mean, when yeah. you have freedom, the only people that are, there's two people in the world today those that are chained to paying their bills and living their life day to day. And there, then there's those that have freedom. And, and the yeah. difference, that chasm between the two is a little change of mindset. Yeah. Because you can help people almost get out of this matrix and become free mentally. That's, that's a life-changing gift. Yeah, and I mean, learning it at any time, is, you know, it's not too late. I didn't have anybody to teach me any of this. I didn't know anything about any financial literacy. I was never taught. Uh, parents never taught me uh, nothing like that my mom was a single mom you know so it's she was doing whatever she could to get by to feed you know feed me and my sisters so um, I want to make sure that you know my kids have that advantage other people have that advantage Um, I just want to you know spread the word well he's Tyler Dwyer I'm Chris Champion I am so glad we had this time together I'm, I'm so glad that the people that are watching this are taking time to learn about your story reach out to them Tag him, sell his product, become his affiliate. 
You can only learn how to improve your life. Facts. <laughs> right, hold on one second. <laughs>